Hi, I'm Paris, and I just passed the halfway mark of my hyperbaric oxygen therapy course of treatment. I finished over 20 sessions, got about 20 more to go. The condition that I'm doing the treatment for, radiation proctitis, improving nicely. Some other conditions that I wasn't doing it for, but I was hoping might improve with the treatment, they're improving also. But like anything medical, there are side effects. I'm having those as well. Let me give you the update. So every weekday morning, you'll find me over at my local hospital wound care center receiving hyperbaric oxygen therapy in a big tank with up to six other people. They pressurize the chamber to 2.2 atmospheres and I breathe via a clear plastic hood, 100% oxygen for 90 minutes each session. Now this treatment is for radiation proctitis, which is rectal bleeding that I developed after having radiation treatment for prostate cancer, the hyperbaric oxygen treatment. The very first week I was doing it, noticed no change. The second week I was doing it, it got so much worse. It, it worried me because there was so much more bleeding more often, which I was told and put my mind at ease, the hyper oxygenation of my blood and tissues means more circulation can now get there. So the healing process needs blood and oxygen to come in and do the healing. So that's why I was seeing much more bleeding temporarily. By the third week, uh, that, that lots of bleeding went away and there were some days I didn't notice anything. A couple days during the fourth week, I did see some kind of like blood material, but thicker, more coagulated, like it had sort of scraped off a healing wound rather than just openly bleeding into the rectum. And in the fifth week, I'm not noticing anything out of the ordinary, which after doing more than a year of having to deal with this, that's very nice. One of my fellow divers, which is what they call what we're doing, we go on dives, she was asking about the improvement that she was seeing for her medical condition and if that would remain even after she stopped the treatment. And you do your two months or so of having the treatment with the hyperoxygenation that's there providing everything that's needed to heal up that wound. But so long as the capillaries get built, even after you finish the treatment, you'll still have the blood supply to maintain that healed tissue and you're all better. If the, the capillaries don't come in, then when you finish the treatment, that wound may go back to how it was before. But they did tell me in my case, the fact that I was seeing extra bleeding early on, that was a good thing. That was an indication more blood was getting there. So hopefully lots of capillaries there to maintain the healing that's happening. As I was coming up on my 20th treatment, the wound care doctor there who's managing my case interviewed me to see about the improvement that I've been seeing so he can write a letter to the insurance company to ask them to pay for the second set of 20, which they agreed to. And I was telling him about my thumb. The arthritis in this started getting bad last fall and it was really bad before starting this treatment to the point where I was pretty much not using my left hand for much because any kind of like trying to open a jar or squeeze something, oh my gosh, it hurt so badly. And I had read that even osteoarthritis can be helped by the hyperbaric oxygen treatment. So I was crossing these fingers because it hurt to do it over here. But uh, within a week after starting the treatment, the pain just reduced, reduced, reduced like 90%. And I'm back to doing all kinds of things with this. But I wondered how could it get so much better so fast? And when I told the doctor about the effect on the arthritic, arthritic joint, he said, yeah, I've heard about this from other people. And it's not so much that the hyperbaric is helping the arthritis, it's helping the arthralgia, which I had to go look up later and see what that was. It's the joint pain. So it's not like my joint has healed itself overnight, but the way he described it, the, the pain sensory nerves can be hypersensitive. And so you feel a lot of pain, even if it's not quite justified by the amount of damage to the joint. In any case, the hyperbaric treatment can calm down those nerves, I guess, wherever they are. But I've noticed it, especially in my thumb. I'm afraid that when I finish the treatment and I don't have the oxygen affecting the nerves in that way, this is probably gonna go back to how it was. And I might look into uh, ongoing maintenance treatments of hyperbaric oxygen. There are less expensive ways that you can do it that you don't have to go to a hospital or wound care center for. They call it mild hyperbaric oxygen treatment, which isn't a hard shelled, 
chamber so the pressures aren't as high but you can still get 1.3 1.4 atmospheres pressure and do the oxygen I'm guessing more manually with a regular mask and through a tank but if if I can do that a couple times a week it keeps the arthralgia away might be worthwhile as for side effects from the hyperbaric oxygen treatment yes there are some yes I have some one is with the ears, not too bad. Every day, of course, we're getting pressurized and depressurized and the ears pop, 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 pop. That hasn't been a problem. But occasionally during the week, when I'm not having the treatment, I'll get a little crinkly sound in one ear, especially when there's been a loud sound on TV or somebody shouts. It does that after. I did notice on the weekend I don't experience it, so I assume it's from that daily pressurization, depressurization. Just as it doesn't happen on the weekends, I'm anticipating when I finish the treatment, I won't experience that anymore. The big one, though, is the eyes. Now, I thought it was the pressure on your eyeballs that caused the focus to change. So your zone of focus sort of moves because your eyeballs take on a little bit different shape. For quite a while, I've needed reading glasses to read anything small print up here, but I have no trouble seeing the sign down the road. Things have switched up. Now, things out there, there's a little bit of blurriness to it I've never seen before in my life. But when I go to read a book, I don't need the large print books. I don't need to use my Kindle. I can read small type right here now. That's been quite a change, but it's that zone of focus that was out here has moved in here and it turns out it's not it's not just the pressure it's the combination of the pressure with the oxygen from how um, the doctor there explained it to me the oxygen gets absorbed into the lens of the eyeballs and that with the pressure temporarily changes the shape changes the focus it doesn't I thought well what if I just keep my eyes closed the whole time while I'm in the chamber but no apparently it's the oxygen the hyperoxygenated blood going everywhere and it brings the oxygen to the lens and so it absorbs the oxygen from what I've read from what the doctor told me six to eight weeks after finishing the treatment my eyes that that range of focus should shift back out here so once again I'll need reading glasses to read but the sign in the distance will be sharp again that side effect started, I'd say, the second week of treatment. I noticed my reading glasses seemed like they were off because I, I had to move the book at a different distance to be able to read. <laughs> I don't think it was until probably the fourth week that I, when things, I noticed when it's dark in the room that things at a distance, really I had uh, trouble seeing detail like on the TV when it's dark in the room, couldn't read the subtitles. And so finally sitting in the living room with the book saying, what's wrong with these glasses? And I have them off my head and I look down at the book and I can read it perfectly fine without them. And I realized, aha, so it's just that zone of focus has moved in. I'll take advantage of that and do a lot of reading while my eyes are at this focus. And I'll trust that my eyes will go back to how they were a month or two after the treatment finishes. The other, I don't know if you could call it a side effect, but something that it's very subjective I've noticed is when I finish the treatment for several hours afterwards, I have just loads of energy to go and do stuff. But when I start to get tired after dinner, man, I am so tired by nine o'clock, it's a struggle to stay up any later. So I feel like having the extra oxygen, it boosts my metabolism to much higher than it normally would be. But when that effect wears off, it also drops down to lower than it would ordinarily be. Of course, it's possible some of that's related to the changes I had to make to when I eat and drink. So I don't have to fart or pee while I'm in the chamber. So I stop eating and drinking at 4 p.m. every day. So it's possible that energy thing could be related to that because I stop eating so early in the day now. And of the various other people I've been doing the treatment with in the chamber, no one has had occasion to need to use the restroom during the treatment. And to my noticing, of course, I do have a hood on with the oxygen coming in. I haven't noticed that anyone has passed gas. But it makes me glad that I did go to the trouble to make sure that by the time I go at 8 in the morning, I've got you know nothing left I need to expel for a few hours. So... I don't have to be the first one that people say, you can't believe what somebody did in the chamber today. I'll update you again when I finish my treatment completely and I can have gas at my leisure. And I'll see you on the next review. There are so many choices and you don't want to stress. You want your health food and home receiving only the best. That's what we're here for. We give honest reviews. Paris DX.